Hi Melike. Hello Zülal. How are you? Fine, I'm good. What about you? I am also good. Yes. Great. Mm -hmm. So let's start the discussion, shall we? So in this week, we will talk about fake and real engagement in the classrooms. And before we start, we have two articles to discuss. discuss. Um, the first one is about the face-to-face -face education. And the second one is the in the online education. So we will start with the face-to-face. Um, -face engagement. And, yeah, face engagement. With an online environment. Yes, that's right. And we will continue with the online. So let me summarize the article first so we can talk about it. So in the fake or real engagement, looks can be deceiving article. This is the name of the article. It talks about a research among the university students that held in the in a austere, austere? yeah. Australian yes, University, okay. and it it aims to investigate language learner engagement from the learner perspective. So, I guess it's a semi-structured. The data um, collected with semi-structured interviews, and there and they had control group. Yeah, one they had control. one, one and control then, groups and then, they asked a couple of questions to the participants and they um, analyzed the data according to that. Mm -hmm. And do you have anything to add or say about the article in general? In general. Um, so this article, as you said, talks about uh, engagement learner engagement and whether it's fake or real. So in the data, they realize that some of the students fake their engagement for some several reasons. Uh, we can talk about that uh, in our discussion, but for I, I'd like to go in the page order. I have some notes and I would like to talk about them a little bit. So the engagement, according to the art article, engagement uh, has three main di dimensions, which are behavioral, cognitive, and affective. And behavioral uh, engagement can be seen by eyes, and uh, it me it's the engagement when students um, act uh, and have actions that uh, provides engagement in the lesson, such as maybe writing some notes down and maybe some nodding, yes, I, I listen to you, I understand you, or um, some other things. And More like in physical context, right? Yes. In physical in, context. Both in physical context and online context, actually. Mm -hmm. uh, we, if we, in online lessons, if we open our cameras, or uh, participate in the polls, let's say, uh, ha happen during the um, lessons. Uh, it's also a behavioral engagement. And in cognitive engagement, uh, we see learners engaging with their thoughts. They uh, are invested with their thoughts. They are thinking about the task um, or they are analyzing the task, they are cognitive engaging, cognitively engaging. And the last one is effective engagement, which is willingness to engage and um, emotional responses, it says here. And it also says they are not uh, all the time simultaneously work. Uh, sometimes you can be behaviorally engaged, but not cognitively. Yeah, do you think that way? Do you feel that way too? Of course, the uh, ratio among them are not always uh, like the same. Sometimes you may feel like uh, cognitively engaged, but not effectively engaged at the same time. It depends on a lot of different um, things that we should consider into mm -hmm. the environment. 
Yes, I agree. Not all the time you are in a classroom and you are taking notes, but you are completely listening and understanding what you are uh, hearing. You are just writing them down just to look at later time, but you're not comprehend. You're not uh, comprehending what the teacher says. Maybe um, that's. Uh, we can see that in our lives as well. I do that sometimes because I'm not, I'm busy thinking about something else, maybe something distracted me from the lesson, but I take some notes for the sake of it, but definitely not understand what the teacher says sometimes. <laughs> it's a reality. <laughs> and uh, there are some, um, components to this in the uh, second page of the article i i saw some a uh, concept uh, the notion of studenting mm -hmm. can did you find it it it's it was really interesting to see a studenting as a word because it's very true the concept is That's very right. true and it made me smile. <laughs> yes, uh, students do that. It's students a do whole that. different topic to um, investigate. It's oh, really yes. a broad term that includes a lot of different things. It's yes. an umbrella term, let's say. Yes, it says here that students will do anything to survive uh, in the lesson, to maybe pass the time, to um beat the system it says here and when you are um let's say uh, bored you're not interested in the lesson you do some things um that will distract you and it will it will um pass the time did you ever experience something like this i have some, one example one or two example in my mind i would like to share that with you but i would like to first uh, hear it from you if, if you have an example like that. In my whole student life, mm -hmm. I was studenting. I was like, it's more, um, it's more dominant, I guess, in the Turkey education system. Uh, but we have all over the world, this thing, as you can see from the article. Mm -hmm. But in my whole student life, I, I have experienced it really um from just um trying to get a good score in the exams to f uh, faking the engagement mm -hmm. in the classroom so uh, do you have yeah. any specific examples uh i guess not no mm -hmm. okay <laughs> i don't have so i would like to share my experience with you in my high school okay. times uh, I was not doing this, but uh, the other students, uh, my friends in the uh, my classroom, were because we hear headscarves, right? You don't see our, our ears. So we, uh, my friends were um, taking their headphones and uh, t uh, take it, putting them on under the scarf, under their shirt and under their scarf. Wow. So there was no cable to be seen. Um, and the teacher wouldn't understand they were not listening to them instead of they are listening to some songs, maybe. So <laughs> this was really, I think it's studenting <laughs> and they will do something out of the ordinary like this to maybe not listen to the lesson. And sometimes I was doing this, <laughs> but sometimes um, because a lot of the time you're not interrupting the lesson some of the some of the teachers can uh, let you put your head down on your desk right sometimes and when i was not doing this that often <laughs> but i was doing it when you put your head down like this we, we were uh, taking our phones this is the desk and we were doing uh, interacting with our phone and 
maybe look in the so on social me media and play some games. And this is this was my studenting and my experience of studenting. It was really funny to see that there is a term for this. And when you fun. when you say that, I remember that I like as you do with your phone. I was mm -hmm. reading some novel books. <laughs> Mm -hmm. <laughs> During the lesson, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's a different kind of student thing. Yes, it, it was funny and interesting to see that here. So I would like, I want to share this with you. Thank you. And it was really we, funny. <laughs> yes. Um, and if you look at the article, we can see that some, uh, how, some students fake their engagement when they are engaging in it and why they are engaging, uh, fake, uh, fake engaging in the lessons. So there are some, um, it's uh, un understood from the article that some participants uh, used nonverbal messages in order to fake their engagement, in order to look like they are engaging in the lesson. Hi again. Let's see you. Okay. Okay. Hi. We had a connection issue, so the video stopped. I'm sorry about that. So, shall we continue? Yes. Yes. Um, I was asking you uh, how often do you think this nonverbal uh, fake engagements occur? Okay. Um, let me mention that um, we have all personal lives, personal problems, and these kind of personal issues and the physical environment I'm saying about face-to-face -face, uh, lesson, mm -hmm. and physical environment is also important. So these kind of things can affect our engagement or focus. And because of that, um, I can't um, give a certain um, say frequency about it, but mm -hmm. these kind of things can affect our engagement and when we feel down or feel unfocused, we are tend to do this um, non-verbal fake engagement signals. Mm -hmm. And for me, um, I am very distracted about like everything. I can easily lose my focus. So I tend to use a lot of uh, fake engagements during the lesson. For me, it is like that. What about you? Do you use? Yeah, yes, I do use it actually. And um, because I don't want to be seen as uh like she doesn't listen our lessons at all because i do i do really listen um but sometimes which it's really hard for me to focus on something for a long period of time and so 40 minutes is a very 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 long time for me to focus on some things i i can't even watch a tv series in 40 minutes let alone a movie for two hours it's really hard sometimes so um i yeah, i use that nodding i use nodding a lot of times and eye contact i i tend to look at the teacher's eyes or uh, their way or the board and i 
sometimes not my head or I act like I take notes, but I uh, sketch uh, sometimes. So this is somewhat uh, frequent for me too. And you talk about uh, the physical context, uh, some of the elements that affect our engagements in the uh, less classrooms, in the physical environment, which was one of my uh, points that I would like to uh, point as well. Uh, so um, physical environment is really important as you mentioned, or, Uh, just now. And I can say that in our university, Medipol University, uh, we had lessons in the B3 floor. You remember that, right? It's underground. Uh, underground. Yes, yes, we were underground. There were no windows, no fresh air. The only air comes uh, coming from was through the air condition. Con how, how do we call it? Yes, air conditioning, I guess. And it's very artificial. And you can't really um, feel like you are breathing air. It, it, at least for me, uh, I was a lot of the time, uh, I was very focused on that how can I cannot breathe correctly and how it's very, too, very hot. How it's, I wasn't complaining about too coldness, but the hotness, uh, kept me really sleepy during the lessons in that environment. Be because in winter time, and naturally a lot of the people like warm weathers and hotness and they turn up the ther thermostats. And I don't like it be because no fresh air is coming and the hotness just builds up with our uh, breaths, the breath we give out. So I, couldn't ever focus on the lesson most of the time. And I was like, I can't read. How, when is this uh, lesson is going to end? I need some fresh air um, from time to time. And one other thing that affected me in that environment was the lightning. Uh, lighting. Absolutely. Not lightning. <laughs> uh, lighting. It was a yellowish color uh, and it felt really artificial you don't see anything like sunlight so i was really focused on those things which affect my engagements and it's uh, written on the article that uh, physical conditions one of the four main categories that affects um, student engagements besides teaching style content and a uh, number of other facets it says here and so I really do think that physical condition is one of the most important things that affects students' um, engagement, motivation, participation, everything. I absolutely agree with you. All of the mm -hmm. things that you mentioned in our face-to-face -face, um, education was a really mm -hmm. a problem for our focus and engagement during the lesson. All of them here. Yes, I, uh, I don't know if you remember, but one of our teachers uh, in that classroom said that uh, in order to students to focus and engage in the classroom, their basic needs need to be uh, provided. If they are thirsty, they will not listen to the lesson. If they are hungry, if they don't have uh, fresh air, sunlight, Um, they will have difficulty to focus on the lesson and they will focus on their needs uh, instead of the um, uh, activities in the uh, classroom. And the hier which, hierarchy of needs? Yes, uh, which was like eye-opening to me, yes, because if I'm thirsty, I will only think about uh, being thirsty. And most of in my time let's say in my time when i was in uh, first sec elementary school we were not allowed to drink water we needed to ask our students for permission to drink water so thinking about this it was a little problematic i guess that's right and mm -hmm. addition to that um 
we are not allowed to go to toilet without mm -hmm. permission. But I really don't understand the rationality um, about this. Like, how can you expect from students that to um, to hold their they toilets? Need. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they they need and focus the current situation like this is i guess so absurd that i can't even truly understand why they are making some rules like that mm -hmm. i think i not i'm not necessarily agreeing with you on this point because we have recess time 10 minutes or 15 minute recess times and learners can as well uh, uh provide their needs in that time uh, for their uh, restroom needs um, because when you allow um, all of the students to go outside the uh, classroom at any time they will exploit it because we were trying to do it uh, in my student time and we were even using our uh, pencil sharpener to as a reason to speak with my classmates, we were going to trash can and we were all together, like three people, <laughs> sharpening our pencil. What's the reasoning behind that? We were trying to talk to each other. That's the reasoning behind that. And when you time your um, uh, per, um, let's say when you time, when you are going to go out of the classroom and you say, I'm going to go out in five minutes and you come at and 10 minutes we have five minutes out there and let's talk about it let's do something crazy <laughs> which is not attending the lesson for five minutes that's the crazy thing and i i think that students will exploit that eventually but like saying that no no one in time you can't go outside of the classroom yes it's a really harsh way um can i add something to that mm -hmm. i guess and i think it's all about knowing your students as a teacher if Absolutely. they are just manipulate your permission or not and trying to teach that why we have break times mm -hmm. and the bond between teacher and students can um can make these um, permissions effectively just uh, for using when you need it. Mm -hmm. uh, can I make it um, uh, clear? I, I don't I know, but yeah. I guess. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and the other, uh, uh, can we, is it everything you would like to add in the uh, conditions part? I would like to talk about the teaching style and the content, which are very important as well. Um, before that, let me add something to the nonverbal uh, signals mm -hmm. that we use. It is mentioned in the article that both um, in real engagement and fake engagement, uh, students behave um, something like nodding or taking notes. These are the nonverbal signals, right? But mm -hmm. in terms of both real and fake, they are just doing that. So mm -hmm. it's not very obvious to um, see the teacher if the students are really engaging or not. I found it interesting because we are probably doing this kind of non-signals, uh, nonverbal signals in our whole life unconsciously like um how can i say that we are just um copying each other and we are doing this kind of things unconsciously from the uh, elementary school to university maybe i, mm -hmm. I really found that interesting mm -hmm. yes. yeah and we can go on i guess mm -hmm. so and there were other categories like um, teaching style content and other uh, things that may uh, 
take the student attention, I would like to talk about the teaching style. And okay. the, it's written on the article that the lecture formats sometimes can be um, difficult for students to stay engaged in the long period of time. Some of the students, uh, some of the uh, participants in the article stated they are stated that uh, after 90 minutes, for 30 to 40 minutes, they just uh, lost their uh, motivation and their engagement in the lesson, which I agree. And as I said before, uh, it's really hard to focus for me to, uh, it's really hard to foc focus um, for a long period of time. 40 times, maybe it's not that um, long for, a, for an adult. And it's, uh, it depends on the mood that I am in actually, because sometimes I can listen to it maybe 80, 80 minutes and I wouldn't uh, lost my connection, my uh, cognitive engagement with the lesson at all. But uh, sometimes 20 minutes is, is enough for me. And it depends on the individuals, I guess. And I think it's really important for um, to know that, that these uh, factors affect student engagement. That's right. Mm -hmm. Sometimes as a teacher, you may not um, understand or see if they are, um, if the time is too much for the students or not. So I guess it's important to check the students focus time to time during the lesson to take a break and give it some time to um, relax or recharge themselves. It's, mm -hmm. it's really important. Or yeah. even, even asking some uh, subtle questions that maybe can uh, answer with simple yes or no, that will um, take the attention, just um, give, the, give the learner a moment and then take the attention back. Just give them, uh, giving them a rest, a little rest, maybe. Questions as a uh, stimulating students to focus back, mm -hmm. like that. Okay. Yes. Um, that's all I, I want to say from this article. Is there anything you would like to add? Yes, one more thing I would like mm -hmm. to add. At the end of the. Um, at the end of the article, mm -hmm. um, it is asked to the participants that why they are paid engaging during the lessons. And uh, a lot of them that said that uh, they were trying to be kind to their mm -hmm. teachers to yes. feel teachers uh, okay. And I think that, um, um, I am saying that for the young learners because um, in a university or high school, you can just clearly um, explain yourself like, I lost my focus, I am not engaging right now. But in the young learners, uh, you may feel like um, fake engaging to be kind to your teacher. So um, I guess the teacher don't have to take all the burden uh, to make lesson engagement. Mm -hmm. um, in order to share the burden with the students, I guess teacher can um, take feedback from the students to if they are engaging or not. Like, mm -hmm. yes, really. um, how can I say that? There are a lot of different things that uh, students can um, show their or express themselves if they are engaging or not. Like a hand signal or a specific color card maybe can say that during the lesson mm -hmm. and they gave us they may give a signal about if they are engaging or not engaging so that the teacher can understand them during the lesson without interrupting and um yeah he can take a feedback and make a information with that feedback so yes 
that's all I want to say. <laughs> Please, thank you. And another reason some of the students doesn't want to look that they are disengaging, they're not engaging in the lesson is because they are fearing from the teacher or um, what they might say, or they're going to get uh, bad grades. Which is, I think um, is very valid. Very what? I'm sorry. Well, it's from the student's perspective. Well, that's right. That's mm -hmm. right. And I think teachers shouldn't create that kind of environment in the classroom. Teacher um, students shouldn't listen because they are the fear of the teacher or the fear of the bad grades. Mm -hmm. This is kind of a um, how can I say that? It's a wall it's between crazy. teacher and the students. It's getting um they are in time to time they may feel like closing themselves to the engagement or the lesson because of that kind of reasons maybe um yes by the way i am so sorry i am touching my face a lot my face is <laughs> it's, okay. <laughs> it's okay so let's um let's talk about the online in the online environment yes what is engagement. student engagement in online learning <laughs> that's right so, so what is the difference between face-to-face -face and online education the engagement the um, like uh the things that you notice during the face-to-face -face and the online learning the engagement part of the thing so in online lessons, I think there are much more obstacles to go through in terms of engaging in the lessons. For example, if you have a, let's uh, look at the younger or not even younger, but high school or at any age of your time, uh, maybe you have a younger sibling than you, maybe you have a baby in your household and a lot of the time, th these are some of the uh, factors that may in, uh, hinder your engagement in the lesson. And if you are, if you were at school, yes, there are some students that are your friends that may be affecting your um, listening or your engagement in the lesson. But I think they are more controllable than uh, when you are at home. And if there is a baby crying right next to your room and most of the time a lot of the students doesn't have a particular room special room for themselves so they need to listen to the lessons in their um common room in their um salon salon <laughs> and so uh, i didn't hear you uh in their living room yes or? in their living room yes thank you uh, so it's especially hard for them to uh, engage in the lesson cognitively especially and and yes that's what i think is the main uh, difference between online and um face-to-face -face engagement and one of the th other thing is that it's really hard to uh, assess if the the students are engaging in the lesson online and then it is uh, in the face to face because um, even though students try to make it look like they're not um, they're engaging in the lesson like taking notes or as I said putting their uh, head down you will see them there's something wrong and there is they are maybe not particularly engaging in the lesson and you can do something about it but when it's online there is not i think yes that you can do some things but not uh, more than a particular things i i think maybe um designing a content designing content or activities that will um gain their attention and engagement but you you can't really make them speak up or turn on their cameras i think those are two main uh differences um 
what I think is, I think it, it's easier to um, make a behavioral engagement during the online lessons because with one click or some like other things you can just maybe polling. Sometimes or... you don't really have to think about what you are clicking on. On a poll, let's say, and you see some a question and some answers or some uh, options. You just click on one of them. That's it's not really shortness. That's right. Uh, cognitively engaging. That's right. But in the part of cognition, the cognitive engagement it is harder than face to face, I guess, because mm -hmm. you can't really reach out to the student. Excuse me. Mm -hmm. Did you uh, hear me? Uh, can you repeat it again? Okay, um, face to face because um, you can really reach out to student to uh, give a cognitive um, engagement to you as a teacher. Mm -hmm. And I think it's uh, harder in uh, uh, online education because most of the time if the lessons are in an early time, a lot of the students won't even bother to come out of the bed because they are not obligated to, or they are not expected to come out of the bed to attend the lesson. So, and if you are in your bed, in your pajamas, <laughs> you will likely to fall asleep or think about falling asleep. You cannot truly engage during the lesson because mm -hmm. you have, other things that in your comfort area, in your safe zone. It, it, this is obvious. like that for me. I can't really generalize it because I don't really know uh, others' experiences in that area, but I can speak it for myself like that. That's right, same for me. <laughs> mm -hmm. But I really agree what you are saying, all, all of the things that mm -hmm. really sweets my um, <laughs> thoughts. And experiences as well. <laughs> yes. So the uh, another thing you would like to add is there any? Um, I guess now no, not I don't have any. So I would like to talk about the article a little bit, the chapter. Um, okay. In this chapter, it uh, this chapter the article touches upon three perspective of engagement for online learning, uh, which I list, it, it, it's written as interaction, which we can uh, narrow it down to interaction, interactivity, and learn um, lesson design, I guess. Mm -hmm. Yes, learning design. And on interaction, uh, the interaction, uh, um we can categorize not we but it is categorized as there are three types of interaction learner to in, uh, instructor learner the learner and learner content in interaction and as we can understand the names learner uh, to uh, instructor interactions are when the teacher Ask, uh, asks when the teacher or the learner ask a question or they talk between, they create a dialogue. And learner to learner interaction is like having group works or pair works and having to have discussions uh, with your pairs, like as we do right now. And learner to contact, uh, content interactions. So what do you think about it, this? Do you think in something? Do you have something to say? For all of them? Mm -hmm. About the general um, idea of interaction. I have a question actually. Mm -hmm. Which one do you think the most um, suitable for self learning? Self learning. Mm. Self learning. Like student, <laughs> let, let's say student centered learning rather than teacher centered hmm. uh, definitely learner to learner and learner to content interactions uh, because 
when learner centered interactions uh, when you use uh, learner centered interactions okay uh, we want to encourage students to talk between themselves or uh, we want them to be the ones who are uh, doing their work and who are actively participating in the lesson and engaging in the lesson and so yes the learner to instructor interaction should exist even in the learner centered um, type of lessons but not it shouldn't be the main focus of the lessons uh, maybe some given instructions on what we are going to do we are going to do this 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 if anything happens ask me i'm here now you can speak with your friends or um, you can think about this, do this, and just steps back from the stage, which um, I think it was on this article. I remembered uh, when I say stage. Um, let me look at my notes. Huh. It, it says on the article that not a sage on the stage, a guide on the side. I don't know if you picked that up from here, but I really like that um, sentence which saying stage uh, reminded me of it so i'm sorry <laughs> it was no not no it's okay. okay thank you thank you for oh, mentioning yes. that um, maybe uh, step away from the stage and give the microphone to the learners that's uh, right and <laughs> using content that will uh, support learner to learner interactions uh, may help uh, may be useful for learner-centered um, instruction. We have similar thoughts about that. Yeah, I, I feel the same. I think the same. That's why I asked you because I guess that you will uh, answer that in that way. <laughs> That's why I By the way, we you. have 10 minutes, I guess. Yeah. What should we do? Let's speed it up. So, do you have anything to add? Yeah, on the learner content interaction, let me find it on my papers okay. right here. Um, it is said that Thompson and Jorgensen, I assume Jorgensen, uh, defined learning content interaction on a continuum. So one end uh, includes direct interaction instructions or reading, writing, and one, uh, the other end, includes constructivity investigate the um, content explore on that so my question is uh, at what end of the spectrum uh, do you think the online education in turkey stands what a nice question so do you have anything in your mind um I think lately uh, it is more encouraged to students to uh, think their on their own and explore the content and what's giving, but not um, part not wholly, let's say, because a lot of the time I see that it's still on the uh direct instruction uh, at uh, at side of that spectrum and not a lot of the time students are expected to think creatively or do something um critical for their own uh engagement or for their own learning and rather they are more expected to uh give answers to uh questions that's already known um, like in our practicum as i'm not going to talk about that right now um, a lot of the times the questions asked are um, uh, i'm going to let, uh, let you continue because i need to look at something i forgot what i was going to say I need to <laughs> okay okay Oh, so, I think I found it. Hmm. A lot of the time, uh, questions asked are display questions, 
choice questions and product cost questions. Choice uh, display questions is like when teachers knows the answer, but uh, ask them in this for the sake of asking them. And choice questions, yes or no questions and product questions like uh, facts, we know facts and we ask them to students to give us the answer. Like how was the weather today? This a facts question. So I feel like it's more on the uh, direct instruction on the end side of it, but I think it's getting more on the constructivist side. As the I agree. Why? Yeah. When the time go goes by, mm -hmm. there are a lot of um, the focus in the English language lessons in Turkey are going more productivity based i guess rather than just uh, being in a passive mood and just listening or maybe some answering some certain questions mm -hmm. yeah and the other perspective is interactivity uh it, if the lesson is in, interactive it is engaging it say basically says on the article uh, and there are uh, as we said there are two types of engagement behavioral and cognitive on online lessons if one student is behaviorally engaging in the lesson if they are clicking on this maybe screen or uh, doing some uh, dragging scrolling down like like that uh, to the maybe activities given by the teacher and that's what behavioral engagement in in the online um, sense online environment and um, yes mm -hmm. okay uh, in order to maybe uh but as we said before, cognitive uh, engagement and behavioral engagement might not happen at the same time, simultaneously, all the time. So I think we can use behavioral engaging tools, something students can uh, get in, do the work themselves, like Nearpod. I use Nearpod on my some of my lessons, and sometimes students, uh, students a lot of the time draw on it maybe draw their own uh, interpretation of the task or they click on the poll or they give their own thoughts and on a club collaborative board um, using something like that to uh, support cog uh, cognitive engagement might be really uh, useful and helpful in online learning i think Mm -hmm. And as the last thing, the learner learning design uh, perspective, it says that um, there are three types of uh, models in terms of learning uh, design, which we uh, know about design, a, a curriculum design, uh, the lesson design. And there are three, three main types of it, inquiry-based learning models, simulation-based learning models, and peer-based learning models. Uh, I'd like to talk about the simulation-based learning models and role-play simulations. I think they are uh, one of the most, um, used model in this uh, simulation-based learning model, at least the one I heard the most. What do you think about it, the role-play simulations? I think they are very really useful to help students uh, use their voice. Um, I think for the last uh, before years, saying that, okay. I'm sorry to, because we have it's two okay. minutes. Should we end it here and continue on a, another session? Let's do that, okay? If that's okay for you too. Okay, okay, it's okay. Okay then, let's end here, okay.
Thank you. Thank you. Hello again. Hi. Um, so, so you are talking about the simulation-based learning models. Yes, role play simulation. I yeah. I don't really remember what I uh, tell told last, but I would like to share my opinions about the role play uh, simulations. I think they are very um engaging way of uh, to way of activities that will stu take students interest i think if you um design something that students will like maybe it can be something even they uh, written if they are able to write something some of them may be uh, you can use their scenarios to make come it up say um, make it alive and or uh, you can use already existing pieces such as readings and maybe some novels short stories and uh, let them uh, uh, play it out and let them think about it or even you can maybe change the tone of the story, which will help them critically and creatively. Let's say something uh, happy is happening in the uh, story. And you can say, um, do this, but make it sad. How can you make it sad? What can you say to make it sad? How, uh, how would their impressions be? Uh, if you are doing it like ha ha ha, then make it like hmm, this happened. And if they try to do that, they I think it will develop their creative thinking side as well. So I really like role playing uh, activities and role um, simulation, role play simulations, but it's not uh, all the time uh, available because there are a lot of students in the classroom, which everything comes back to the population of the students, I think. Um, and the frequency is that the role play simulation used is important because if you uh, use a lot of time, it will uh, decrease the effectiveness mm -hmm. of the right. simulation, the uh, technique you use. Mm -hmm. uh, so it is important to um, really use that in a way that uh, students are not bored but also they are uh, improving themselves in a way mm -hmm. yes i think it's a really good point too because you need if you use it all the time students will like this again i don't want That's to do right. this mm -hmm. yes uh, thank you for your contribution i really like You're it welcome. And I didn't ever think about that it that way before. So thank you. And the last thing I would like to mention from the article is peer-based learning models. And in peer-based learning models, a lot of the time it encourages group work and a pair work, uh, which I think in our country, um, it's not very, this learners are not very used to it uh, before. Yeah, we can use it effectively in as prospective teachers, let's say. If we want to use it in our classes effectively, we need to give time for students to uh, get used to it and be more comfortable with their peers uh, in learning uh, perspective and learning environment. Because a lot of the time students, yes, they maybe they are good friends, 
but they really don't talk about lesson sub subjects, lesson related subjects. So if we want them to talk about even in English, particularly in a, another language, they are really uh, hesitant to interact with each other, but th this doesn't mean that we should not use it. But I think we should um, give learners some time to use it. That's right. They don't see the other students as a source of learning something. They think that Absolutely. like they are just um, learning as the student, but mm -hmm. also they can actually be a source of learning to themselves if they work together as a group. Yes. It was a really great, you put it a very great way, thank you. And I think a lot of the students are not very autonomous learners. Maybe in time we will get there, but a lot of the time, as you said, uh, the source of the learning, the information is the teacher. So they are waiting for teacher to give them some information. They are waiting for teacher to learn something. So this may be problematic with uh, peer-based learning models if we want to integrate that into our lessons, but we need to encourage students to do this in order to uh, maybe have some learner-centered uh, environment in our uh, lessons. It affects the engagement a lot. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, in the sense of um, teacher-based, versus peer-based learning. Mm -hmm. I guess the peer-based is more engaging the students because they work together as a group rather than just uh, taking the information mm -hmm. solely and just, I don't know, learning something. Learn, learn that way. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, that's all I want to share with you. All I want to discuss with you about the articles. That's all for me too. So let's end the discussion here. It's yes. This one is a little bit longer than the others, but that's yes. okay. and we have some difficulties, but yeah, it's online. <laughs> so <laughs> thank you for uh, sharing your opinions and your thoughts with me. It was really great to hear from you. Thank you. Thank you for your participation. Thank you for the discussion, Del. So then see you later. <laughs> you uh, take care of yourself. You Bye. too. Have a great day. Bye.